Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is right now up 26. You've got the Nasdaq down 64. S&Ps are up 4.5. Uh, folks, uh, our guest today is William Kilgore. William is the founding member of the St. Petersburg Tenants Union. The St. Petersburg Tenant Union seeks to address the housing issues in St. Petersburg in regards to gentrification, rising rental prices, and negligent landlords. And uh, bottom line, folks, we've seen across the country the price is going uh, exponential. In the Tampa Bay area, they're going up faster than anywhere in the whole country uh, in a metro area. William, wel welcome to TFNN. Hey, well, thanks, Tom. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So tell us, first off, uh, you know, what the Tenants Union is all about and how you're trying to help people right now. Yeah, sure thing. So, uh, you know, the Tenants Union, we're a uh, renter's rights organization. Uh, you know, we're, we're out here... Um, uh, not just advocating for uh, you know expanded tenant protections, but we're also fighting uh, and uh, organizing tenants to take direct action uh, to improve their conditions. Uh, you know, similar to labor organizing, you know, uh, organizing uh, uh, especially in, in multifamily buildings, uh, you know, and, and kind of wresting uh, uh, back control, uh, you know, from the uh, uh, you know dictatorship of, of landlords. So, so when you say the well, here let's I want we want to break this down, man. So let me ask you something. The, the, so in Pinellas County, I mean, I, I know that the Tampa Bay area, our rents have gone exponential. So in Pinellas County, let's say that, you know, if you have someone that's in a tough position, do you have some kind of a program that you can help them go through the Pinellas County rental assistance? Because that rental assistance goes for 18 months, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that's one thing we, uh, you know, we help with. Uh, uh, when we go out and canvas, uh, we're doing outreach or, or investigations of, um, it, you know, apartment buildings and things like that. Um, you know, that's one thing. Yeah, we, we always uh, uh, provide information on, on how to apply for the ERA, uh, uh, Gulf Coast Legal Community Law Program, uh, other free legal aid organizations and uh, all that. You know, so that's stuff we, we provide to tenants and, uh, you know, try and, and we also assist them with that, you know, if they need help, uh, you know, or. Uh, have issues with the uh, tech issues and things like that. We, so we, so we let me ask that. this. You just talked about landlords. Are you pushing, are you taking all landlords in one pot? Uh, are you saying that there's negligent landlords and there's halfway decent landlords and there's good landlords? Tell me where you are, are at that. Sure. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I, we definitely, I, our target is, you know, especially corporate landlords. Um, you know, they're unaccountable uh, faceless uh, corporations, uh, you know, that, that own lots of properties, uh, you know, across the country and that kind of thing. Uh, but, you know, landlordism is inherently uh, exploitative. Um, you know, we have an interesting idea about democracy in America, you know, and uh, uh, freedom, uh, you know, that only applies in the, the public realm. Uh, but that freedom doesn't uh, uh, extend to uh, things like uh, businesses, your workplace, or the place you live, uh, and we don't have a democratic process. Uh, you know, in in uh, you know a multifamily building, let's say that's owned by a landlord. Um, you know, there's no democracy. That landlord is essentially a dictator uh, on their own private property, and and that's kind of what we uh, you know kind of see freedom as. You know, to be able to uh, you know be be your own dictator uh, on private property, and and we we think that's wrong. We think that democracy should be. Uh, in in living spaces as well, and that uh, people who live in a space uh, should have ownership and control of it. And so, how would they have ownership? Would they buy? Um, it? That's. Um, would they? You know, it's uh, well, well, it's it's something you you might you might leverage uh, through through direct action. It could it could be uh, through purchasing, but I mean that's kind of what we <laughs> you know what what we strive for. We take back the control. There's more of us than well, uh, than the uh, landlords. Uh, uh, William, all I'm trying to do here is figure out, okay, so you got a landlord, right? Inside of those expenses, and I understand rents are high, I get that, okay? But inside of those expenses, landlords have taxes, they have, you know, they got to fix the place up. Who's going to do all of that? Uh, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, how does that work? Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's the thing. I mean, the, the landlord is essentially like a middleman, you know, or, a, you know, you have a management company. I mean, look at, like, how condos operate you know you have a management company but it's a, you know it's under like a you know uh each occupant owns their their own unit and they they have a uh uh you know a, a board and they make decisions for the for the building it would be similar to that you know uh 
you know, but if, you, if you're renting, you, you don't have any of that. You know, you give the landlord their, the money. You don't have any say over how that money is spent, if it's going into improving your your unit or, or the, the facilities as a, as a whole. Uh, you know, and that and that money can just be, you know, pocketed and, and put into the, the landlord for them to make profit. Yes. Um, so, you know, tell, so tell we, me we how you tell me how you'd like it set up. Um, just, to, you know, collective ownership. And I and that's that's kind of how, uh, you know, we, we you know what we're doing with the tenants union. You know, we're we're going in trying to when you say organize, collective uh, ownership. So so let's stay right there. You get collective ownership. So. That you do like a, a cooperative, right? And then a cooperative would what buy a building, and then you'd basically have folks in the building. Is that what we're talking? Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, and you know, for the interim, I mean, we have you know, we have landlords who own, own a building, let's say. But you know, similar to uh, labor organizing, you know, there's more of us uh, than the landlord, and and the landlord relies on us to uh, pay our rent, you know. And so we have we have leverage, uh, you know, to uh, be able to uh, meet certain demands and, and things we need and things that aren't happening in the building that landlord is negligent or, or whatever. Uh, we, we have that power uh, collectively uh, to, to leverage that. You know? No, so I, I can, definitely, kind of I can definitely see that with folks that don't take care of buildings. That's, that's unbelievable. So let me ask you something. Have you come up with any proposals to the city of St. Pete in order to basically, you know, what, whatever you believe in? Have, have, are there any proposals in there yet? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, we had a um, a couple ordinances were, that were just heard in the uh, HLUT committee uh, back in September. Um, one of them would expand uh, the month to month notice uh, uh, of lease termination from 15 to 30 days. Um, and then the other one would uh, prohibit landlords from discriminating uh, against folks based on their source of income. So things like rental vouchers, uh, Social Security. Right unemployment any lawful source of income right. uh, so those are being heard they're being pushed uh, we've got some resistance from the bay area uh, apartment association uh, they proposed some last minute changes to these ordinances um, and that were uh, that were taken up but that that's that's all tentative right now so you, you we're, know, we're, you know we're in I, for a fight you know what i saw this morning it was pretty cool actually that years ago in new york city and they have a, a, this and the whole country has a problem like we're talking here but what they did, what was really cool, I thought, and this is something that you can think about with, with your folks, is that they, the, there was buildings that, that weren't, weren't in great shape, but forget that, I'll just cut to the chase. And what it was, was that, whether, let, let's say that you can get some folks together, you get a building, right? Then you can go to the city and say, hey man, that's it with the taxes, because the, the, the tax ratio inside buildings is pretty expensive too. Do you know what I'm saying? Let, that, okay, if the tax ratio stops, I mean, the cities, everyone's saying that they want things to lower. So it's like, okay, man, you know, you, you have a tax ratio that stops, then it would seem that on a continual basis going forward, you'd have rent that would be less. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, and what else can, can help with that, too, is, you know, cutting into to the landlord's profits, too. You know, I think that's the big thing. I think that's really where a lot more of that that money comes from in a lot of those expenditures. Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I don't think low income people should be uh, really taxed hardly at all. But um, hey, stay right uh, there. We got one more segment. Stay right there. All right. Right back. Sure. Yeah. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis the tiger first mortgage program may be the program for you the best rate on a five-year cd in the country right now according to bankrate.com is paying one percent per year or one thousand dollars per one hundred thousand dollars invested the tiger first mortgage program pays seven percent per year paid monthly on secured high value buildable properties in st petersburg florida the investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow uh, up three. NASDAQ down 72. S&P's off seven. Our guest today is William Kil Kilgore. William's the founding member of the St. Petersburg Tenants Union. So, William, uh, we only got a couple seconds left, but let me ask you. So, I, I get the gist. What, I, what I'm trying to figure out right is this. Is that, okay, so we have nasty landlords for sure that don't take care of units. Unfortunately, we're in Florida and tenants don't have rights. Um, and if you don't know that, folks, okay, the, the bottom line is that it's, it's pretty weird how you can take tenants and push them out in Florida. I mean, it, it's actually insane. It's, I don't know if it's 30 days or 15 days. It, it's very quick. But how, how do you figure that you can get a community going? Do you know what I'm saying? That who's going to pay for it? How, how do we get to that point? Um, well, I mean, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of wealth uh, in uh, St. Pete specifically in Florida, um, you know, but in a lot of wealth that uh, in this city specifically this, you know, been coming in in the past several years. Yes. And, uh, you know, I mean, I think uh, I think it comes from uh, it comes from those with with wealth. Uh, you know, they they uh, you know, they need to give that back, um, you know, to the to people who whose labor and uh, everything makes uh, makes the city city operate so what about the labor that the people though that you, what you're actually saying is that you're saying someone can come work and then you're saying they're going to give it to you and what about their labor um well i mean it it depends i mean you know what whatever we're talking about but you know specific like a landlord uh you know people say they're housing providers they're, they're not housing providers uh the people who build housing are housing providers the workers um you know and the landlords are essentially just a middleman uh, who gobbles up property, uh, amasses profits, uh, and then extorts people for the the basic uh, need of shelter. It's a it's a basic need. Uh, it is a you basic know, and need. Oh, and listen, man, this was great. I'm gonna have you back on, man. Appreciate it. You have a great weekend, a safe weekend. Thanks for the education, man. Thank you, Tom. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great one. Have a safe one.